Bernard Hopkins, a throwback fighter on the threshold of greatness. The execution one victory away from becoming the oldest fighter in the history of boxing to win a world title. his way Jean Pascal the Canadian champion is attempting to succeed where father time has so far failed and stop behind it is a rematch to save the WBC light heavyweight champion Jean Pascal against modern day great Bernard Hopkins part two the first fight ended in a controversial draw this time pride redemption and legacy are all on the line hi there welcome along big time boxing a breathless weekend of action continues with a potentially historic world title fight. Joining me to cast their eye over events, former world champion Richie Woodall and the editor of Boxing News, Tris Dixon. So to our main events, history in the making of the last stand of a modern great. The entire fight coming up for you from the Bell Centre Montreal, where hometown hero Jean Pascal faced the ageless Bernard Hopkins for the WBC light heavyweight crown. We'll join our commentators, John Rawling and Glenn McCrory. Canadian champion Jean Pascal, born in Haiti, now living in Laval, Quebec. He's drawn them in the thousands. A Canadian record crowd of 17,560 are packed into the huge Bell Centre in downtown Montreal. And Jean Pascal in Canada now is big, big news. He is big news, but it's a great crowd that's come to see him. But I think he's got a point to prove here because so much of this fight has been about Bernard Hopkins, about the record, the oldest champion. And I think, you know, he needs to take all this away from Hopkins. So he's got a big point to prove, Pascal. Hopkins says that he will emulate Archie Moore who was over 40 when he came to Canada to beat Yvonne Durrell twice in the late 1950s. Archie Moore, the old mongoose, who became world champion at the age of 39. Hopkins, now 46. Jean Pascal, just 28 years old and looking to go one better than when they fought last time around. It was a draw then, a controversial one. Pascal now looking for improvement. He's got to improve. He has got to improve. He started very well and then slipped away, came down. People thought that the Hopkins is level. Hopkins managed just to out-hustle him to, to bring him down to his pace, which he's done so often in the past with good, good fighters. Hopkins been there, seen it, done it. For more than two decades, hostilities resumed against Jean Pascal. And a real buzz of anticipation around this big arena. Pascal best remembered by British fans for that fight against Carl Froch. And a terrific fight it was back in 2008 when Froch emerged victorious. Arguably a light heavyweight, Pascal now a more formidable operator. But the pressure is on him to achieve. Hopkins looking to create history and waiting patiently in the ring as Pascal takes his time making his re-entrance. Here he is, the champion. No nonsense, no frills about Jean Pascal. Hopkins always the showman, the motor mouth as well. He's been talking this one up all the way. He's been the one across the world, really, who's been creating the headlines. Pascal, though, the champion, the man with a point to prove. Michael Buffer, master of ceremonies, waits in readiness for the big introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir et bienvenue à l'avènement principal, 12 rounds pour le championnat du monde. 
12 rounds of boxing for the WBC, IBO, and Ring Magazine Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Presented by the group of Ivan Michel and Golden Boy Promotions, sponsored by Dynasty. Une co-presentation de mise au jeu à de Videotron en collaboration avec les courses live. Tant que j'en sais, pas des sports de combat, de l'allergie, des accoules, des courses à des jeux. Directeur Michel Hamlin. WBC Supervisors at Ringside, Executive Director Mauricio Suleiman and Joe Dwyer. IBO Supervisors. Advisor, Milton, Milton Whitaker III, and at ringside, the three judges, Les Trois Jours Guido Cavalieri from Italy, from the Philippines, Renate Danseco, and from Thailand, Anikang Tonkan. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, from England, the referee, L'Arbitre, Ian John Lewis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the largest boxing crowd in the history of the Bell Center, 17,560. Mesdames and Messieurs, et vous prêtez. Mesdames et Messieurs, de le Centre Bell, Montréal, Quebec, Canada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Oakland Blue, the blue corner, wearing blue. Official weight, 174, 14 ounces. His career, 59 fights. 51 victories, including 32 knockouts with five defeats and one draw. He's a future Hall of Famer from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. The former undisputed middleweight world champion and former light heavyweight champion of the world, Denar, the executioner. In the red corner, wearing black, officially winning 174, 14 ounces, 28 fights, 28 victories, including 16 knockouts, with only one defeat and one draw. And in his career, as a light heavyweight, he is undefeated. Originally from IET, now living, training, and fighting out of Montreal. Quebec, Canada, presenting the reigning, defending WBC and Ring Magazine IBO Light Heavyweight Champion of the World, Champion de Monde, Jean Fight is a little bit slow to come to center ring where Ian John Lewis, and what an evening it is for him. The British referee will give final instructions to Jean Pascal and Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins as ever, looking in quite superb physical condition. Now the moment for Ian John Lewis. I'm the referee. I spoke to you both in the dressing room. I bite my command at all times. You both know the rules. Watch the heads. Keep the punches up. When I shout break, you break clean. And remember, defend yourself at all times. Shake hands. Hey, it's good. Let's go. Let's go. The fight, the fight don't start. That's it. 
Kim John Lewis insistent on pleasantries. Now, though, the hostilities resume. Are we about to witness history? Hopkins waiting, wanting to get underway. And at last we start. Hopkins, can he become the oldest world champion in the history of boxing? Last time they fought, he feels that he was wronged. Pascal had him down twice, but he thought Hopkins and many at ringside thought that he did enough to have won it. Now, he says, there was will be no question about it. He says he's an old school fighter, old school, not always pretty, but it is effective. Well, he's certainly been effective over the years. Some great wins, some great names on his record. Truly a tremendous professional, Bernard Hopkins. But he's been doing this a long time. Will suddenly he be 46 overnight. But he looks to be trying to start this early maybe looking to get a, a better start this time Pascal had him down twice the first time they fought Hopkins so long the supreme middleweight in the world and it's terrific fighters who've beaten him Roy Jones way back in 1993 almost seems like another era doesn't it twice in those not great fights against Jermaine Taylor in 19 in 2005 and then a little bit controversially in some people's eyes the defeat against Joe Calzaghe in 2008 the only times that Hopkins has been defeated and I have to say a pulsating atmosphere here and huge support for Pascal yeah Pascal very much on the defensive using the ring neither one really getting through with any punches just falling short with their jab Quiet opening. Hopkins so often the supreme technician. He has an ability to sometimes take the pace out of a fight and bring the fight onto his terms. So difficult to catch square, so difficult to hit flush. Pascal, the young man, he knows that he's got to maintain a faster work rate than he did first time around. Well, very little at all, if anything, landing for either man in this opening round. Both falling short, a little bit wary of each other. KG KG. B Hot not committing himself. A couple of flicked jabs from Pascal. The right hand, Pascal's danger punch. Well, not a great deal. Pascal lunging in, landing a couple of shots. I think it's only fair to say that things will hot up. I would hope so. A quiet opening round. Too much respect for both men, but that's the nature of this fight. I can only give that a, an even round. 12 rounder WBC light heavyweight championship of the world. Who's going to be the first to impose themselves on this contest? Hopkins looks, as I said, in just wonderful shape again. He's lived the life over the years only through self-discipline and dedication can you st still be performing at this sort of level at the age of 46 it is a remarkable story well pascal's trying to go to war here trying to tee off with some big shots crowd responding i'm not sure he landed too much flush if anything no a little bit wild and ragged and hopeful from pascal but it's starting to get exciting starting to let the punches Go. Hopkins, as you heard, being told by Nassim Richardson, his trainer, don't just allow him to jump around and look as though he's doing something and pinch rounds. 
Hopkins told he's got to impose himself on his man. You can see he's significantly the taller by three inches or so, and Hopkins also with a reach advantage. Interestingly, according to the bookies, Jean Pascal was being quoted as the favourite for this one. Well, you would favour that the younger man maybe do a little bit more this time. Had Hopkins on the floor twice last time, then sort of just faded in the second part of the fight. Uh, it's a boxing phrase, isn't it? Being old man out of it. And uh, Pascal, you could say, was. Old man by the oldest. George Foreman, the oldest world champion, back in 1994 in Las Vegas, when he beat Michael Mora to become world heavyweight champion at the age of 45. Pascal looks for the, the left two, blocked by Hopkins. If he has a fault, Pascal, maybe that he sometimes throws those hooks from too far back, really wings them in when Carl Frotch defeated him, and he defeated him quite clearly in Nottingham just over two years ago. It was the straight shots which allowed him to take control. Hopkins, although down twice in that first fight, he has got a good chin. Third round underway. So close, they couldn't split them first time around. Although Hopkins promoter Richard Schaefer described it as a shame for boxing when that verdict was given. I must confess, I thought that Hopkins did enough to nick it, probably by a round or two. Judges, as we've seen, neutral, an Italian, a Thai judge, and a Filipino, if it goes the distance. Hopkins looking to get center ring, trying to establish his jab. Just take the rhythm away from Pascal. That's a good left hand from Pascal. Best punch, perhaps, that he's landed so far. Hopkins, though, takes it well. Crowd roaring their support for Pascal every time he comes forward. Problem is, John, he's just rushing his work a little bit when he makes that charge. Great right hand from Hopkins. And that certainly was felt by Pascal. Wanted to hold on. William John Lewis is going to have to get a hold of this one. Hopkins went in with his head as well as the holding from Pascal. I think that was what uh, he would regard as a little bit of payback as what happened in the last round. Solid jab there from Hopkins. Doing better. Looking solid. It was an excellent right hand he landed with. It's rough in there. Heads again going in. But Hopkins... Just looks as though he might have rattled Pascal just a touch here in the third. Quick left took from both men, tip the tap there. Plenty of drama in this third round. Another good shot from Hopkins. Solid right hand. Pascal come back with his own right. As Hopkins went to capitalize on his punch I think a few people thought this was going to be a bit of a chess match this fight but it's warming up nicely here in the third long way still to go what? Hopkins, sorry Glenn Hopkins trying to seize the initiative he is he's looking to get off first which is is good for the older man Pascal now trying to push forward but not getting through with any good punches. 
So clever Hopkins when he was trying to tee off those hooks in the last few seconds. Hopkins just spoiling Pascal's work. The more eye catching punches in that round from Hopkins. Doing well. It's a good start from the veteran. John Pascal, at the moment, this fight is not going his way. He needs to up his work rate. He needs to find a way to land more leather, more telling punches. There's the right hand, flush on the chin. Brought it from way back as well, but Pascal could not avoid it. And that is showing. Getting stamina his authority on this early on, Hopkins. Hopkins' story is well thumbed over the years. Served time in jail. His first visit when he was 16 years old. Sent down again when he was 17. And Hopkins, when he was released from jail, said that he was told, you'll be back. He said, we'll see. And boxing has been his redemption. And now he bids to make boxing history. Yeah, John Lewis is a busy man in there already, isn't he? Better from Pascal and a decent right hand to the body. Hopkins only too ready to be seen as the aggressor. Hopkins looking to, to push forward. Chants from the crowd are all for Pascal, as you'd expect. Hopkins, though, you sense, just in no way phased. Remember, this is the man who defeated Felix Trinidad, who defeated Oscar De La Hoya. He's used to going in against favourites and upsetting the odds, confounding the odds. He's done it so many times through the years. Both of them landing telling blows there. <laughs> Tongue comes out from Hopkins. Has it goaded Pascal into a more dynamic approach? Well, he's certainly doing more. Having more success in this round, Jean Pascal. Just getting busy, throwing more punches. Well, prior to that uh, little. Uh, display from Hopkins, the two of them have landed really solid punches. Hopkins, you sense from the body language, feels at this stage that he's bossing this fight. Yes, but I think Pascal's having the better of this round. He's done a little bit more than Hopkins. Nice little right hand, Hopkins got in though. the right hand from Pascal as, and then the left and Hopkins forced to give ground this is good work from Pascal Hopkins looked a little hurt there certainly I think that punch stung him started with a body shot and then two head shots if there was any doubt about the round well that attack certainly meaning that Pascal won it Well, Nazim Richardson worried that Bernard Hopkins being dragged into a young man's fight. Yep, it's the one saying a little bit low. Pascal didn't argue, he just hit him back with a, a good right hand. And there, another one from Pascal, who suddenly 
started to find the range and get the punches off. That was perhaps Pascal's best round of the fight so far. Fifth round now, underway. It was so close first time round. Has all the makings of being a close one once more. Now, Will Hopkins goes back to being the spoiler, trying to take the aggression out of Pascal's work. Standing and trading as they did at stages in that fourth round has certainly not been the Hopkins way over the years. No, technical. Some say at times dull, but he is effective. Pascal has become massively popular in Canada. Talk of a rematch at some stage in the future against Carl Froch. Froch has given him the gentleman's agreement that that would happen. And I think he's told Pascal that not only would it happen, he'd be prepared to go to Canada to have that fight. That's all for the future, maybe. Bernard Hopkins clearly has other ideas. Getting a little mess here. There's a, there's a bit of bad feeling. The heads have rubbed in once or twice as they still look for superiority. Well, quieter in this fifth round so far. A couple of good punches for Pascal. Sometimes Pascal's work's a bit rushed and a bit wild. He needs to just think about it a little more. Good body shot from Hawkins. Second to two to go, allowing him to come in. Referee again getting involved. Having to be firm, Ian John Lewis. Leaping in again behind those swinging hooks. Again, the Hopkins tongue comes out trying to taunt Pascal. This has been a better round for Hopkins. Trying to bring the ring savvy back into play. Sixth round, and Hopkins doing enough probably to win that last round. Hopkins straight out for work, and Pascal looking to hold. Has there ever been an athlete in any sport who has been in the sort of condition that Hopkins is at his age? I can't think of one. Well, it's amazing to be boxing at this level. At his age, the guys, the years. Couple of crafty ones around the back. Scores first time around, if you didn't know. Went 114, 112 through one of the judges to Hopkins, and the two other judges scored it the draw. So draw was the result. It was a majority draw. Hopkins, quick right hand. Still not getting off. Well, Pascal. Just tries to rush his work and dive in. Hopkins again, great hand on the left. Let go! Let 
Right hand lead on which uh, Pascal maybe, maybe just take a little bit of the confidence out of him. Now here comes the lecture. When I say don't hold and I say break, break, do you understand me? Prepare you, okay? Well, I certainly understood. Yeah, it's Pascal for me, a bit more the culprit who's looking to hold. He's trying to spoil Hopkins. Hopkins is the one that's looking to get his punches off now. He's goading Pascal, who looks to hold again. What's your head? Just stand me. What's your head, Hopkins? What's your head? Right, let him go, let him go. What's your head? Hopkins complaining that he's being held. But not only is he, is he an old pro in terms of skills, also an old pro in terms of fouling when it comes to it. But this that's, is... not around, that's not allowed either. The referee's got to get a hold of this. It's very negative from Pascal. I'm surprised that he's, he is the one that's looking to hold the more. And he's the younger man. I think this is another round for Hopkins. He's outboxed him in this round. Find it very hard to see how he can possibly give this round to the champion. No, I don't think so. He's out hustling. Pascal. Halfway stage, and if the judges see it as we do, and a little bit of afters there, referee having to physically get Pascal away. If the judges are seeing it as we do, then the old pro Bernard Hopkins is starting to do a job on Jean Pascal. So Pascal needs to throw the punches during the round and not after the round. There's how Glenn's got it. And Hopkins, according to you, he's on his way to that historic achievement. Yep, there's still a long way to go, but Hopkins is doing very well at this stage in the fight. You heard Hopkins say there, winning this fight, he's confident. Yep, and he's grown in confidence, and, and rightly so. Pascal looking to hold too much. He's not looking to fight. He's the champion, but he's been out hustled and out fought by the elder statesman of boxing. Time, time. Jean Pascal, a long, long time. Look at this. Well, look at that. <laughs> I think sometimes when you think you've seen it all, I've never seen that before. <laughs> no, he's taking all the play away from Pascal. Showmanship at its best. Press ups in the ring. Well, is he going to turn this one into an exhibition? He's showing every little display of kidology that he can. Not only trying to outbox him, trying to outpsych him as well. Left hand. Well, Pascal is running away with Hopkins. Pascal needs to do something. He needs a big round. Not fighting with any confidence, is he, John? No, I canvassed uh, opinion around some of the names in boxing prior to this one. And they, almost to a man, went against the bookies who made Pascal the favourite and said, no, Hopkins has got the skills to do it. Good right hand from Hopkins. Pascal ducking low and now a bit of technology from Pascal. Hopkins won't care about that. Well, it's not the technology that Pascal needs, it's the punches. He needs to start the fight. Well, it's Bedlam in Montreal. They're trying to spur Pascal on to greater endeavour. Still not landed a meaningful punch in this round. Pascal falling short with the jab. Remember Pascal, the man who outworked and outboxed Chad Dawson, who gave Carl Frotch troubles back in 2008 in what was regarded as one of the fights of the year. So far in this particular fight, he has just not, for the most part, been able to find the old 
target that is Bernard Hopkins. Well, he's been outboxed in this round, and another good right hand hands from Hopkins. Is Pascal starting to get frustrated by it all? He'll view it, I'm sure. A fighter's mind is a public humiliation to lose to a man of the age of 46. We might say it's great to see that, histor that history is being made, that Pascal would have to be the man who'd live with it. A good right hand from Hopkins. Looks physically so strong. Yeah, so far, Pascal being out boxed, out fought, and out sight. And Amparis with swings like that. Panic, frustration. Another round for Hopkins. Well, on your card, Glenn, we now see Bernard Hopkins three rounds ahead. This is a big advantage at this stage of the fight. It's huge. It certainly is. And Pascal needs to change the tide. I thought he was going to come in with a better game plan than he has so far tonight. He's allowed himself to get frustrated and swinging in those wild hooks. Straight punches, says Richardson. Eighth round coming up. Is this WBC World Light Heavyweight title about to change hands? What a story if it does. The crowd a little bit muted now. They gave Pascal the hero's welcome. There's not been too much from a Canadian perspective to enthuse them over the last two or three rounds. Pascal trying to pick it up. He needs to. He's allowing Hopkins to, to box at the pace he wants to, to dictate behind the jab. Pick up the pace when Hopkins decides to do so. Similar style in, in ways, although I think Hopkins has been more dominant here. Similar style to the first fight, except no two knockdowns to even up the equation. Pascal had that big round, the fourth, didn't he, when Hopkins allowed himself to be dragged into those macho toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges. Changes. since then boxing skills have prevailed yep that's pretty much all you could really give Pascal other than that you know close first round good right hand from Hopkins and complaints about work around the back of the head get on with it says Ian John Lewis but it was a good right hand from Hopkins and the jab is working well as well. Nice and relaxed, just pops that punch out. Pascal's tried to instill a greater sense of urgency in the early stages of the round. There's another nice sneak right hand before the clinch came in, coming in from Hopkins. So he's just not been able to maintain it, sustain it. Well, this is where Pascal has to have a, a plan B. I'm not sure he's really got one. Lands with the left hook. Needs a lot more of that if he's going to claw his way back, assuming that the judges see it as we do. It's better from Pascal. Needs the youth and the strength and the mobility to start to take a toll. Good right hand from Hopkins. Nice response from Pascal. But Hopkins still having more eye-catching punches in this round. The rights work well, the jab, another sneak little right, then the left hook. Pascal's trying to throw more here. 
Nice old fashioned stare between the two at the end. telling both men to tidy up the work Hopkins complaining about punches around the back of the head how did he score that last round then I give it to Hopkins I think that, that catching punches he worked the jab well and then the, the right hands just certainly not a, not enough good work from Jean Pascal well Pascal told by his corner you are behind we go into the ninth The jab popping out again. And still, still full of energy, isn't he? Yeah, still just keeps buzzing on. You know, he's so professional, so well trained, great condition, and such a, a great head on his shoulders. Knows this game so well. Pascal again, no knockdown. Referee says get on with it. Pascal just embarrassed a little bit as he. Overreached. Lovely. Good boxing skills. Hopkins likened himself in the run up to this to Archie Moore. Archie Moore, the historians of the sport, one of the supreme heavyweight, light heavyweight champions of all time, if not the supreme light heavyweight champion. Hopkins, though, if he can achieve victory here, maybe he deserves to be mentioned, certainly in the same breath. Well, it's amazing that he's not just still going at 46, that he's, he's on top of his game, fighting for the world title once more. And so far, on my card, he's winning it. Look at the concentration on Hopkins' face. And Pascal just allowing him to pop that jab and has just not done anything really worthwhile in this ninth round a few speculative swings and lunges it was interesting to hear Nazim Richardson in the corner with Hopkins just reminding him he's still in Canada he's still away from home and always worth pointing out that home advantage can play its part we see it so often let's not be white in the I sometimes see it in English rings as well as around the world. Maybe naturally the way of things when judges are hearing the roars of the crowd. A bit more kidology from Hopkins. And slippery, elusive skills. He's boxing at his own pace, Hopkins. Fighting when he wants to fight. Boxing when he decides to box. That's the experience he's got. Oh, good right hand from Hopkins. Taking the fight away from Pascal again. So many of the old pros' tricks. Look at the footwork to get out of that corner. There's a good left hand in there from Pascal. Came off the ropes and landed one of his own. Well, I don't. I find it hard to see how how Pascal could be given that round. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Even in Canada. The old boy is doing a job. I wonder if the judges are seeing it the same way. Stay off the roof and run the combinations on him. He's trying to steal. He always saves in the late round. So he saves everything to try to go home now in the late round. Don't let him steal, John. We still again. Don't let him steal. You've got him a long, long way ahead, Bernard Hopkins now, Glenn. I have. He's running away with it. Just old man and Pascal out of this. So smart, so intelligent. Just doing that, that bit more, the eye-catching punches. 
For me, off from Hopkins, it's hard to, to see what Pascal's doing. Seeing a little sneak right hand there, and he touched down. Pascal again taking every available second before getting off his stool to resume the action. Just three rounds remaining. Three rounds, maybe, away from, from boxing history. Pascal, the one this time who's being told for holding. Well, Jean Pascal, for me, has just run out of ideas here. Yeah, there's no plan B. He doesn't know what to do to change tactics to nullify the work of Hopkins. And, you know, Monas has been far too much holding that's come from Pascal. He hasn't looked to be fighting on the inside. And you would have thought that the energy and work rate would have come from the younger man. Well, perhaps he is fitter, maybe he is strong but he's not shown it and Hopkins physically has looked at least as much also you know, he's used the jab Hopkins so much better than Pascal he's kept Pascal off balance for the, the quick little counters I think Pascal even if he emerges as the defeated man here takes a lot of credit for instantly after that controversial draw saying yeah let's do it again he was prepared to put his title on the line once more i'm sure that when he said that though he didn't anticipate this needs some big shots now pascal oh good punch now he's touched down there surely that has to be a knockdown it's not been given but he landed flush with that right hand that's a moment of controversy for me I think that Hopkins there scored a knockdown, not given. Yep, that's twice that's happened. The first one, maybe he got away with a little right hand. But that one, certainly, he landed, tripped on that occasion. He looks disorganised, he's all over the place here now, Pascal. Hopkins is the one landing the telling blows. Been a tough night for Ian John Lewis. There's been a lot of foul play in there in this ring. But he's done his best to keep it clean and keep the fighting going on. If that had been two points advantage, though, for Hopkins, surely that would have put the fight beyond any doubt. Yeah, I don't think Pascal was particularly hurt, but it was the right hand that landed and he did touch down. And I think Hopkins may be being robbed of a, a knockdown. So ragged, Pascal. Assuming the judges are seeing it the same that we are, it's contemptuous the way he's leading off with that right hand, Hopkins. Well, here comes a big effort from Pascal in the closing seconds of the round, but not enough. A smile on the face of Hopkins as he goes back to the corner. The Hopkins fans are in celebratory mood. Just two rounds now remaining. We've got Hopkins a long way in front. Fair to say that our colleagues from HBO have got it closer than we have. Well, for me, at times it's been scrabby, but it's Hopkins, the one that's looking to work. Pascal coming on strong, looking for a big finish. I think he knows he's got to do something big. He's trying to bully his way back into the fight. Worth stressing again, I guess. Scoring of fights can be such a subjective affair. For the life of me, I find it very, very, very difficult to see how a case can reasonably be made for Pascal hanging on to his title so far. And my card certainly would need the last two rounds. Big, big, big. It's all through this fight, he's done nothing special. He's been the one that's looked to. Uh, to hold in close as he's doing here. Times it has been messy and difficult to score. But Hopkins, as he is now, trying to pour it on. 
Lovely right hand there was in that exchange from Hopkins. Pascal stalking him, looking for the big punch, trying to tee off with the one big equaliser. Maybe desperation creeping in to Pascal's game now. Could be feeling that his title is slipping away. Seems to have been watching and commentating on Bernard Hopkins just about forever. Defended that world middleweight title on 20 separate occasions. Now at 46 years old, is he about to win this title? Pascal's pushing, looking to come on strong, looking to try and do something later on. It's a bit of a push for Pascal. Canadian fans are trying to rev him up, trying to move him on to another gear. What if the jab from Hopkins picks him up? Pascal, for me, has just been outboxed in this fight so far. Yeah, he's done better in this round. He's tried to lift his game, maybe. He could have gotten that one. Taps his trainer's gloves. So, just three minutes remaining. Pascal being bred something of a right attack. They know he needs a big last round. Well, here's how Glenn's got it. You can see Hopkins by a big margin. I've got it uh, a couple of rounds closer. American commentators also have got it closer but we are united that this fella is ahead well be a confident display a professional display from Bernard Hopkins last round then Two touch gloves. The crowd are just a little bit muted. Trying to move Pascal to one last big effort. But Hopkins is in touch now of history, in touching distance of history. He's used kidology. Psychological weapons, he's shown himself to be physically at least Pascal's equal and technically and tactically for me his superior. Yeah, when he seems to be boxing with a buoyancy that knows he's got this. Pascal catches him with a, the left hook as he comes in. George Foreman, remember, the oldest champion of all time. Five years old when he beat Michael Mora back in 1994. Now at 46, Hopkins looks as though he just has to box his way towards victory, unless the judges. And I have to stress this good right hand from Pascal, unless the judges see something very different. Some good punches landed from Pascal. Foreman tries to fight back. I think Foreman. Sorry. Hopkins has just done cruise control a little bit in the, the last round. Getting carried away with the talk of George Foreman and the record. And maybe about to go. This is a big effort from Pascal though. He's landed some solid headshots as we move towards what will be the final minute of the fight. And for the upteenth time, Ian John Lewis has to split them. But Pascal has landed some big punches in this last round and is looking to pour on the pressure. Yeah, better work from Pascal. Knows he needs something big and he's looking to try and get it in the final round. Now who's going to be providing that grandstand finish? Final round now, so far, for me, has gone to Pascal. Yep, he's doing the better work. in this last session, Hopkins still though, tries to take it to him a little bit. Again, they clinch. He 
He's just spoiling now, just looking to tie Pascal up. Maybe in the belief that he's got enough points in the bag. Pascal gambling. If only had done this a bit earlier. Yeah, he should have started more like this, shouldn't he? Give Hopkins far too much respect. The clock is ticking down, and there goes the final bell. Both men celebrate. Pascal thinks he's done enough. Hopkins looks jubilant. Look at that. The face he believes of the new champion. Yep, you think so. Pascal is the better of the two. A better last round for Pascal, but you think all the early work should have done it for Bernard Hopkins. That's how Glenn scored it. Last round, well, Pascal made the big effort, but too little, too late. There's a few jeers from the crowd as Hopkins celebrates, but those at ringside, I think, know that barring some sort of unforeseen score from the judges, that he surely, and we have the presses, press ups again. First time we saw those during a fight earlier on. Showing how much energy he's still got left, he believes that he's about to take this cycle. Yeah, he should be, but again, he is in Canada. And a draw last time, Hopkins should have bettered that. He cried robbery last time, Hopkins. And an anxious wait as the scorecards are tallied once again. First time they met, remember it was a draw. This time Hopkins said there would be no mistake and that he would outbox them. He, in a sense, much of this fight has given Pascal, for me, a boxing lesson. Shown all his experience, all his ring savvy. And Hopkins is starting to celebrate. Maybe words got out. He held his hands aloft, and there's been jubilation amongst his supporters. It looks as though they might have got early knowledge that he is the new champion. Pascal looks a little bit disconsolate. Surely in his heart, though, he must have known Whatever happens, that was a remarkable performance. And those are the Hopkins fans there at ringside. Richard Schaefer, top man of Golden Boy Promotions, congratulating Hopkins. And in a moment or two, we will be getting now confirmation of what we know to be a winning performance. Bernard Hopkins. Well, Hopkins certainly seems happy with his performance, talking to the crowd. And of people thought that Pascal would have the youthful exuberance and be able to redraw his tactics to retain this title. It wasn't to be. Maybe you can come again. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames and messieurs, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Guido Cavallari scores at 115-113. Danseco Renate, 116-112. Anik Mantanka. 114, 115, all to the winner by unanimous decision. And new light heavyweight champion of the world from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The legend lives on Bernard, the executioner. can you say, Glenn? What a terrific story that is. Hopkins is the champion.
champion once more. Unbelievable, but he's done it and he did it in style. Was the boss from the beginning. The old master is champion again, and the record has been broken. They're all friends now. By four rounds, by two rounds, and by one round. I'm not sure that they are all friends. I think there might have been uh, a couple of exchanges there, but the bottom line is that whatever the points margin, that this is the new light heavyweight champion of the world, and he is the oldest world champion of all time, 46 years old. He doesn't look it, does he? But he looked every inch a champion. Momentous occasion for Bernard Hopkins, 46 years and four months old. Reaction from Richie Woodall and Tris Dixon coming up in just a moment.